Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 2, verse 24, Matthew chapter 17, verse 6, and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day. Thank you for giving us hope in you, giving us faith giving us this measure of faith and helping us to work it lord god show us the way help us to venerate you as holy help us to trust in your word over all other words in jesus name we pray amen all right you guys joshua chapter 2 verse 24 and they said to joshua truly the lord has given all the land into our hands and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. All right. Whose report will you believe? And so this is one of the two spies as they came back from Jericho. And remember, Rahab had told the two spies that the people melt in fear because of the children of Israel, right? And so they thought it was because of the children of Israel, but the children of Israel knew it was God who was on their side. It was God who was going before them and fighting their battles, right? And so if there was any fear to be had, it was the fear of God that was upon the people. And so, you know, it says, and they said to Joshua, truly the Lord has given all the land into our hands all right and so this is what the spy is telling joshua and you know joshua knows what the re real report is right if they would have brought back a negative report Joshua would have known, right? Why would Joshua have known? Well, because Joshua was one of the spy, spies who went into the land of Canaan originally and had the good report that God had, had blessed them with this mighty land, right? Him and Caleb were the two spies who, who, who gave the good report of what God wanted for the people. And so here, you know, when this spy comes back and he's giving the report of what Rahab had told him, right? And, and what he had spied out of the land for himself, he gave a good report. Who are you listening to, right? It says, truly the Lord has given all the land into our hand. And also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. Sometimes we give the devil way too much credit, right? Sometimes we listen to too much of his confusion, too much of his words, too much of his negativity, too much of his, his, his assessment of the situation, right? Whose report will you believe? When you get a negative doctor's report, whose report will you believe? When you get sick or if you have to do something that you don't want to do and and you you choose to to come at it in a way of positivity rather than negativity that is choosing to believe the report of God over the report of the enemy right we need to make sure that our mindsets are of God that we're listening to what God God says over what we see in the situation, right? Our situations can lie to us. Pain in your body can lie to you, right? Um, um, your job situation or your financial situation can lie to you, right? It could say, oh, this is the way it is. No, 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 no. It is the way God says it is. We need to venerate God's word as holy. God told them to go into the land and conquer the land. So regardless of what the spy came back and said, they were to conquer the land and that God was going to drive it out, drive them out before him. Right. And so sometimes we're listening to the wrong voices. Sometimes we're not giving God the respect and the honor that his deity deserves. He is God. He is the one who created all of the universe. He is great. He is mighty. He is holy. Honor his word. Right. Do his will. Listen to the people who are doing his will. Listen to the reports that are in support of his will, not of the enemy, not just saying what you see, because he could have came back and said Jericho is humongous. Right. How how will we ever get past their wall? He could have said that. Right. But instead, he came back and said, truly, 
the Lord has given us all the land into our hands. And also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. Right, They had heard of the reputation of God. They had heard how God had delivered them out of Egypt's hand. They had heard how he had caused them to cross the Red Sea. They had heard how he sustained them in the wilderness for 40 years. They had heard how he had crossed the Jordan just recently and none of them got wet. Right. They they heard of these things and the fame, the infamy, the 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 report had gone before them of God's mighty works. They don't fear you. They fear God. Right. They think that it's you. They think that it's it's something about you, but it's all about God. Right. It's not about what we see. It's about what we don't see. Amen. God is the one who is holy. God is the one who is driving the enemy out before you. Put your hope and your trust in him. Let's look at this second verse, Matthew chapter 17, verse six. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. This was at the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember when Christ lit up. And there were two witnesses that came and, and they were on the hill. And, you know, one of the disciples was like, we can build a tent. And just as he's in the midst of talking, God booms forth in his voice and speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Right. I think those are the words. Um, they might not be the exact words go look and look at the exact words of what God said to him and so here it says when the disciples heard this they fell on their faces and were terrified and so I understand <laughs> I partly understand what they felt because I've told you guys of the vision I had of God one time and it was so unexpected it was so tremendous and awesome and crazy and scary scary and big and mighty and all I can think of is vaulted and sky and huge and and guess what it only lasted a millisecond I don't even think it lasted a full second it, it could not have even lasted a full second what happened and so you know I was I told you guys this I was taking a nap on my bed and I had because I had a baby and so he was very small he was up at night and so whenever he sleeps I slept and so I just happened to lay down on the bed um with him and I closed my eyes and I could not have been sleeping for maybe a few minutes and a millisecond it could not have been the tiniest of a second and I saw God I didn't see his face. I saw his up to his chest and his arms um, kind of outstretched. And I saw like something over his face and light behind him and all around him and in him and whiteness. And I, you guys, it was just so awesome it was so mighty it was so terrifying it was terrifying I could see why someone would say terrified because it was just like you're struck in when he sees you when you know that he sees you and you see him and it's like huh. and so like I the way that I describe it the only thing that comes to mind was that someone like almost like laid on top of an organ right and and touched every key at the same time in a huge mighty church where there's the biggest echo and the biggest sound and it all happens at one time and it made my court like shake like just like ah, like it was I don't even know how to describe it and and it was it was a lot and I never forget it. I'll never forget the the way I felt, the way it, it terrified me, but it made me feel so like, oh my gosh, I saw the Lord. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was full of awe. And so um, here when it says the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. They were terrified. They heard God's voice, it, it, just his voice. And they were terrified, 
right? Who are you listening to? Do you venerate God as holy? Do you realize he's the God of the universe? So when, when you say universe, you know, I need you to realize you are not even the tiniest of tiniest of tiniest. And yet each detail he knows about you. He knows your hairs. He knows your eyelashes. He knows your eyes. He knows every fold inside your cornea. He knows everything about you. And yet you know, he, he has knowledge of you and yet he created all of the universe, right? He created every star. He created every galaxy, every Nova, every supernova, every, every planetary form, every piece of dark matter is not dark to him. He knows it. And yet he knows you, right? We need to venerate God as holy. We need to respect his word over all words right and and we need to when when the when the disciples were terrified you know you realize that they had Christ in front of him them right and they were talking to him casually as he's lighting up and as he's uh, um taking this form they're just talking to him and they're you know enamored by the sight they they see it is beautiful right but they don't realize that this is also God right? That booming voice that they hear that terrifies them, that is God. Christ is God. They are one. Holy Spirit is one. So when he tells you something, when he gives you a warning, when he gives you a word, when he tells you he's going to drive out your enemies, this is not something that should be taken lightly. You know, sometimes we look at our Bible as if that's God, right? That that look, that little piece of paper, or that object, right? That's not God. That's his word, right? But but God is so powerful, right? He's so mighty to the pulling down of strong. He is huge. He is awesome right and so we have the, his word and it seems so docile you know so quiet let's open the bible no god is great he is mighty those are his words and we need to take his word seriously we need to when he speaks something into our spirit we need to heed that thing right this is the mighty god who is speaking right when he tells you to believe his report Oh, you best believe his report over a doctor's report. Oh, you best believe him over that manager or that, that, that director. Oh, you best believe him over that person who you find as important, right? Take his word as holy. Take his word as truth. He is God almighty, right? And no one else. All right, let's look at the third verse. Hebrews chapter 11, verse three, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Okay. And so, you know, when God created this universe, he did it alone, right? He did it by himself. He did not through Christ, of course, they are one and, and Holy Spirit and, you know, he did it alone. He he didn't need any help from anybody. And yet he gives us the honor and the privilege of hearing his voice. He gives us the honor and the privilege of hearing his word, this word that creates things, this word that formed the universe. He gives it to us just so easily, so readily to encourage us and inspire us and help us to keep moving on right? He is a mighty God and yet he cares about you. He cares about whether or not you need encouragement. Have faith in God. God is building our faith. He's helping us to realize that it is he who created this world and no one else, right? And, and we need to stand firm in faith, right? We need to, if, if he can create, you know, something from nothing, right? We need to, we need to begin to have faith in him. We need to, to let him use our faith, this measure of faith that he has placed inside of us and, and allow it to grow and grow and grow beyond a doctor's report, beyond a, a, a job, beyond a, the word of the person you trust the most, right? His, his word is true. His word is true. 
if we can understand that, you know, he created this world, then these, these matters are small to him, right? These matters are small to him. And, and the land is melting away before him, right? If he told you to go in and conquer something and that thing looks impossible, Go in and do it. Why? Because he is a mighty God and he is a God who can go forth and, and cause you to triumph, right? If he can cause the seas to, to know their boundary, if he can cause the, the planet to be formed, he can give you a word and you can stand firm on your, on his word. Venerate him as holy. Believe his report over all, all other reports. He is God. He is awesome. Trust in his word. When he says he's going to do it, trust and believe he is going to do it. Are you giving good reports to others? Are you spying out the land and confirming what God says versus what the world is saying? Make sure that your words align with God's words. Make sure what you believe aligns with his word. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for all you have shown us in your word. Thank you for giving us hope for tomorrow. Lord God, help us to give you the respect that you deserve. Help us to venerate you. Help us to honor you. Help us to love you. We love you, God. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, take care and be blessed. Yeah.